Hello. Um, thanks for sticking around, um, and thank you so much for the invitation and for organizing this symposium. Um, hold on, I need to see my text. Um, the function of art is to do more than tell it like it is. It's to imagine what's possible. Um, Bell Hooks, she's an American writer, uh, professor, feminist, and social activist. This describes pretty much my approach to realizing projects and encountering and challenging my own norms, or rather, escape them. I'm the founder and artistic director of Zurich Moves Festival for Contemporary Arts Practice in Performing Arts, and was the deputy director, artistic director at the Contemporary Dance House here in Zurich until September of this year. I understand myself as a connector, networker, organizer, contextualizer, producer, and host in the field of contemporary performance and dance. So you've probably noticed that the word curator hasn't so far existed. <laughs> Every year, Zurich Moves Festival is constructed around a different topic and builds a different curatorial context. The multifaceted platform creates time-based experiences, engages and challenges the embodied presence and abstraction of the body. The very core idea of the festival is to bring contemporary performance to more hybrid spaces, disrupting the distance between performer and audience, creating an artistic flow, and breaking the traditional and classical ideas of normative thinking. During the past eight editions, I forged the festival into a happening of artists and spectators an intersection between art and life. I consider the spectator a co-inhabitant of the respective space and want to free them from being a passive observer. In this regard, I am not talking about participatory projects or pieces, but rather the way in which the audience is addressed and taken into consideration and therefore engages on a very personal level with the respective work. This should grant access to the work itself and uh, metaphorically displace myself and the other audience members and bring me to another universe. Life performance rooted in dance and theater has always been my main interest. And the recent development and shift in the field keeps nourishing my interest. I'm referring to uh, performance presented in the White Cube. <clears throat> I am very much driven by the creative process in performance uh, practice, in which failure and slippage are integral parts, as, as well as vulnerability and precariousness due to liveness and ephemerality. Precariousness is also reflected in the programming of contemporary performance and dance, as the perception of the audience, once again, is as individual as its diversity. By contextualizing and queering both bodies and spaces, I am looking for experiences that push boundaries and investigate our contemporary society beyond physical performance. <coughs> contemporary performance for me is about creating images and experiences for both the performer and the spectator. What fascinates me most is in the field of contemporary performance is the fact that we are dealing with real bodies in real time. Yes, humans, an audience, which has to be taken into account, not only in the artistic creation of pieces, but also in the mediation and presentation of these artistic works. I am interested in collective experiences and making things visible, freeing them from invisibility, giving them dignity and credit. With my initiatives, I intend to gather people and foster real encounters. I consider art as a metaphorical exile, a place of resistance and action that can and should create new perspectives and hopefully new meanings. My practice usually evolves out of a thematic focus and the various ways we coexist and inhabit the world. It usually starts from a very personal urgency to look at socially relevant topics 
My research and the process of constructing a certain context is always inextricably tied to an overall discourse and the content of the respective artistic works that are being presented alongside each other. This process is gradual assembly and building blocks step by step that in discourse would form a whole. It is always a balancing act to frame an artistic work and yet give the work itself enough room to let it speak for itself. That a little bit, the context that you understand where I'm actually coming from. In order to give you an idea, an insight into my practice, I would like to tell you about this year's edition of Zurich Moves Festival, which took place here in Zurich from April 8th to 13th, 2019, and as an extended collaboration with Atos de Fala Festival in Rio de Janeiro, uh, from May 28th to June 2nd, 2019. A quote by Suli Walnick, a Brazilian uh, psychotherapist and art critique. Open quote. Have we in fact all become homeless? Did the subjective house dissolve, collapse, disappear? Where is identity? How can we construct an identity in this world where national, cultural, ethic, religious, social, and sexual territories have lost their aura of truth, irreversibly denaturalized themselves, got mixed up in all possible ways, fluctuate or keys to exist? How can we rebuild a territory in the shifting world? How to get along with this disorientation how to recognize some meaning, how to conquer free zones of serenity. And this transnational course oscillates in various variations on the theme variations composed by effective positions that range from wonder to apocalyptic. Hope or hopelessness, it's all the same. Poles of a moralistic position that naturalizes a value system and uses it to project, judge, and predict what is going on. A happy ending or the end of everything, quote closed. During my research and while conceptualizing the thematic frame, I let myself be guided by feminist perspectives and arguments, in particular by Caroline Emke, Sarah Ahmed, Audre Lorde, Rebecca Solnit, and Suli Rolnik. Feminism brings human beings together. Femini feminism must take root everywhere because feminism has not yet been established everywhere. Moving against the flow and consistently insisting upon something time and time again. On the continuous existence of precisely those things that we wish to put to an end to. Or possibly feminism is a manner of starting anew. A feminist movement consists of various different movements and moments, excuse me, of a new beginning, as claimed by Sarah Ahmed in Living a Feminist Life in 2017. I have traveled a lot. I work in an international cultural environment and wish to promote personal encounters. This reality entails complexity and demands a differentiated outlook on globalized cultural production. It is by focusing on cultural appropriation and anthropophagia that I was wanting to make room for reflection on cultural cannibalism and the anal uh, analysis of different cultures within the scope of contemporary culture, creativity, and development. In November 2017, I was in Rio de Janeiro upon the invitation um, of Coincidencia Pro Helvetia, the Swiss Arts Council. This trip prompted me to choose this context for the eighth edition of Zurich Moves 2019. The personal contacts and controversial impressions motivated me to pay close attention to the complexity of the realities in Brazil and far beyond. Increasingly, artists and cultural workers, as well as organizations, take part in international activities, common projects, exchanges, residencies, co-productions, and other forms of collaborations are to foster understanding for different practices and cultures, as well as building bridges by ensuring personal encounters. Within the scope of such projects, power relations are not uncommon. 
because challenge is created by unequal economic or technical conditions or lack of certain human rights play a major role with regard to implementation of projects and influence them decisively. I have gained much uh, practical experience realizing numerous international projects and I'm aware that on an honesty and in part also that an honest and in part also unpleasant discussions are part of the process and that at the end of the day they actually strengthen the trust of all partners. I am consciously mentioning this in reference to the topic of the 8th edition of the festival as with this edition colonial history the representation of cultural minorities as well as globalized cultural production are obviously unavoidable topics that I had to take into consideration. I would like to start off uh, with cultural appropriation and a little bit about the context related to the topic itself. The Oxford um, English Dictionary defines appropriation as the making of a thing private property, taking as one's own or to one's own use. Cultural appropriation, therefore, describes cultural transformation. The discourse on, the cultural, on cultural appropriation has been underway in the US, the UK, and Australia since the 70s and 80s. It refers to the adoption of cultural elements by members of a different cultural group. The minstrel shows in the late 19th century in America are a good example of today's understanding of cultural appropriation. Painted whites perform different stereotypes to stultify and demean blacks for the amusement of a white audience. Today, this is known as black facing. Cultural appropriation is particularly controversial in contemporary society because individuals belonging to the dominating culture appropriate things belonging to indigenous or minority cultures. They do not have to fear discrimination on the labor market, nor do they have to face possible police brutality due to their ethnicity. Cultural appropriation, in my opinion, always becomes relevant when there is an imbalance of power. As Greg Tate, the American cultural theorist, argued in this book, Everything But the Burden, 2013, when addressing cultural appropriation, you need to look beyond culture in the stricter sense of the term, such as music, theater, dance, or visual arts. Indeed, cultural appropriation is about culture in the broader sense, culture as a way of life or a form of uh, perception, the manner in which people lend sense to themselves and the world they live in. A, cult, a cultural modern hybrid and fluid society does not legitimize the violation or disregard of minority cultures. However, political correctness should not be the sole incentive. Permanent readjusting and the question, questioning of our own thoughts and actions are called for. This means a constant reflecting upon your own position in society and constantly refreshing your cultural memory. A quote by Caroline Emke, open quote, just as respect and knowledge, acknowledgement require recognition of the other, disregard and hate are often to be led back to misjudgment of the other, quote closed. The diversity in our society as well as nomadic lifestyles and work habits lead us to questioning our identity over and over again. An inclusive society does not allow for foreigners or the others to be excluded from a dominant culture, but ensure that they are met with interest and esteem, respect and generosity. In my account, I was dealing primarily with cultural appropriation within the context of contemporary performance and dance. How do we deal with a collaborative work process in contemporary performance? Does the common work, does the common work process encourage appropriation or does it help us to practice cultural dialogue? How is appropriation reflected in transnational cultural production? Obviously, a treatment, a treatment cannot allow itself a view that is completely uncoupled from other forms of appropriation. The dimension and argumentation demand profound 
expertise, and multidisciplinary reflection. I was and still am interested in the abundance and the philosophical approach towards this discussion. To me, it is impossible to consider this moral issue and the discourse without taking into account a philosophical perspective. A pluralization of the perspectives is called for a critical questioning of uh, perception and knowledge that is often neglected in a dominant culture. By doing so, I would like to underline singularity because, after all, whether Muslim, migrant, trans person, person of color, or member of any other minority, we are all basically on a quest for happiness and dignity. In argumentation, this is a fine line. I assume that we are interested in discovering similarities and not primarily identify differences. For this is the only way to give rise to empathy. And now to the more specific discourse which was used to contextualize the programming. Anthropophagia on eating and being eaten. Open quote by Tamara Kubas. It isn't about devouring the antagonist or colonizer. It is about liberating relationships from colonial intentions, not as a strategy to create a new artwork, but as a political act towards the relationship with the other. Quote closed. Anthropophagia refers to the practices of the Tupinamba, the so-called Tupi, the indigenous people who populated a large part of Brazil before it was colonized by the Portuguese. The Tupi's cannibalistic ritual at the beginning of the 16th century in Brazil, prior to, to its colonization, also involved eating captured enemies. This was an important component, component of the intercultural contact between the Tupinamba and the Portuguese asylums. This point, the identity formation of the new Brazil, this ritualistic mechanism was an important element in the formation of a new identity for the people and the negotiation of the latter. Eating the other, in brackets, the enemy, is an extreme form of physical dominance. This consumption of the other was not a destruction nor a defense mechanism, but meant the mixing of identities. The cannibalistic ritual allowed the other to enter into the body of the devouring and thus form a new and strengthened creature. Anthropophagia is particularly interesting with regard to assimilation, physical and erotic communication. The anthropophagous ritual could extend over months or even years. Cannibalism was only one of the different stadiums of the overall process of this ritual. Because of the horror and the frightening notion the ritual created in the eyes of the European intruders, it is the most referred to. When we think of anthropophagia, we all only think of the devouring of slain enemies. The ritual, however, is by far more complex. If an enemy is caught, they will remain with the women of the tribe for a long period of time. It is only after the process of assimilation that they will be killed once a relationship with the other has been established. The killing strengthened the own culture because of the otherness of the victim. Then the anthropophagous ritual commences, adhering to very uh, precise rules. Only one person does not partake in in it, the person who killed the enemy. They must leave the tribe to find a second name in abandonment, to paint their body anew, and to thus represent the presence of the enemy slain on his own body. Killing is the most radical form of the experience of otherness. After his return, they will represent a form of contamination of their own culture, culture with foreign elements. If this destabilization excuse me, can be dealt with, then a new balance will be formed. Anthropophagia was reinterpreted by modern society in the 20th century in Brazil. The particularities of the anthropophagous movement remained fairly unknown internationally outside of Brazil. Based on Oswald de Andreadi's essay, Sueli Rolnik, who I quoted before, 
deduce the notion of anthropophaga subjectivity. Her text was published for the first time in 1998 for the 24th Arte Contemporanea Brasileira, the focus of which was anthropophagia. Rolnick attempted to underline the entanglement of artistic approaches on a global level with the correlation of cultural practice. Anthropophagus polemics and the discussion of cultural appropriation should never be reduced to a general picture or style, but should serve as an opportunity for the continuous reformulation of a cultural and societal identity. In her essay, Sueli Rolnick writes, you can understand the body in different manners. The body is part of the world. The other is not outside, as you would normally assume. The outer other is the other of political correctness that wants to be represented properly. But the other is created by my subjectivity. It is not outside. Words hold power, which is why I always work on my wording. And the other is most misleading, quote closed. Rolnick couples this understanding of subjectivity with the concept of Deleuze and Guattari. This continuous reinterpretation of anthropophagia always led to a social transformation. Anthropophagia serves as an important tool in dealing with the policy of subjectivity, that it is to say the policy of the subject and the mastering of positive interaction with the other. Since the shift to the right in 2016, for the first time since the military dictatorship um, of the 80s, Brazil once again is suffering from tremendous inequality and brutal violence against minorities. Understanding the other has therefore become more essential than ever. Uh, according to the UNICEF, every 23 minutes, the life of a person of color falls victim to police brutality, thus destroying the future. Apart from the artistic programming and uh, the pieces that were presented, we held a, a, a choreographic laboratory in both cities, in Zurich and um, Rio de Janeiro, with eight artists from Switzerland, Germany, and, um, and Brazil. And they actually, they weren't necessarily working on, on movement material, but rather they were going to in the beginning, but then they realized that their, their actual worlds that they're operating in are so different that they actually had to um, clarify an understanding of what contemporary performance in each frame means. Thank you so much for your attention.